one of those Android. I'm on one of those Android flip phones. Flips out. Okay. No worries. All right. So anyway, tell me whether or not you want me to start talking or you want to ask me questions. What's easier? Well, first, let me give you a little introduction. Uh, everybody, this is Scott Frank. I uh, I work. I met Scott through social media. He found my my rap and realtor profile, and we started discussing doing some theme songs for his business. And then he started telling me what they do. And he actually helped me out of a real uh, tough bind with a couple of people. Um, I had some listings that were stale. They weren't moving. Um, and to be honest with you, if you think that the, you're going to have a listings like that, it's always better to go to them first. I uh, was in a situation for the first one where he was already on the market for a while. and We just weren't getting any activity whatsoever. Um, so then you, we had to, we didn't take it off the market, but we did um adjust some things and change it to an auction and it doesn't help us as much but it it, it does help it, it helped me a lot i still sold this house made my seller happy um it only took 21 days so i met scott um through social media we started working together and then i started uh telling people about them in florida and now they've closed how many transactions in florida and you guys are from the like, Virginia dc area like like, like 24 like 24 different transactions, but it's just a matter of word of mouth because everybody that's heard about them, everybody that's heard about the process and how it works, it's it's definitely been very, very helpful for uh, listing agents and their sellers. Um, so Scott, Frank, uh, thanks for uh, being here today. We really appreciate it. And sure. uh, if you can give them a little, give them a basics uh, of of the process, how how it starts what have the uh you know the reserve prices the pricing got it. three got weeks, it. all that got it. so my experience is 25 years here at this company called alex cooper auctioneers we're a hundred year old business family generated owned uh same family for 100 years fourth generation we're real estate agents and brokers and we only do auctions we don't do any traditional sales our company was founded on that it started way back in the day with foreclosures and distressed properties. 20 some odd years ago, I sold my own house through the auction method as being a voluntary seller. And it took off and that started the whole thing. I actually sold my business and came to work here because I enjoyed it so much. And that's a true story. So basically what happens is this, Sean or you or somebody may call us and say, hey, I have a property and it's just stale. We've dropped the price a few times. The days in the market are growing. The seller is getting anxious. So we could continue to drop the price, or maybe the auction could be an accelerated marketing program, which is exactly what it is. So basically what happens is, and you don't have to take notes because I have a website that will explain all this. It's a perfect tutorial. Sean called me and said, hey, I got this property. It's in Davenport, Florida. We have it listed at 360000 It was three eighty. Nothing's happening. So I said, I'll tell you what we'll do. Let's talk to the seller and make sure he's on board. Once the seller is on board and he understands the process and he understands it's 21 days from the day that he signs up, it's his auction. So he knows on a certain date and time, he has about an 85% chance that he's going to sell his house using our platform. So 21 days. Then Sean basically keeps it on the MLS. We send him all the remarks. He changes the opening bid price and the listing price to be coinciding with one another. For an example, I think his opening bid on that property was 200000 Now, that's just the opening bid. That's to generate all the interest. You're like the new kid on the block at the new high school. Everybody wants to meet. Now, everybody and their mother's calling Sean. He was inundated with calls and open house attendees, and people didn't know how this all worked. So the opening bid is just the opening bid. It's like Macy's having a toaster on sale on Black Friday for $19, you get in line, and then you're buying something for $200 or walking out with 17 other items. It's, it's really just an accelerated way for you to take notice, just like eBay. So then what happens is Sean's notes on the MLS will say 200000 But the two sentences that are crucial that we give you is the opening bid is basically just that. It's not the list. The list price is the opening bid at the auction on December the 2nd at noon. Please see auctioneer's website for details. So then Sean and I created a cheat sheet, if you will, so he could send out to the agents and the general public that go online that want to know what it's all about. So you can get exhausted telling all these people that call you all day long and they write in and inquire. So what you do is you send out this sheet from A to Z. It explains everything. 
It says this is not a foreclosure. It's not a just, just property. In order to bid, you must do the following. Typically, it's a $10,000 deposit if you're a bidder. It's a credit card hold. It's not a charge. It's just like when you rent a car at the airport, you put a dollar in, and then when you get back, you get your dollar back when you bring the car back. Within one business day, the successful bidder has to wire your title company of choice 10% of the purchase price. That's so the $10,000 credit card hold goes away, and the next day they're wiring 30, 40, 50,000. Okay. That's now for that's, the top bidder. That's, that's, um, after the auction process has gone through the process and they've put their 10% and then the winner has to put up the, the, uh, adjust it to 10% of the total winning bid, right? Yes. So what's yeah. going to happen is you're going to bring your seller many, many, many favorable seller advantages to the auction. You're going to bring them 10% deposit, non-refundable. You're going to bring them a far bar contract with an auction addendum, which says, there's no inspections, not even for informational purposes. There's no appraisal, and there's no financing contingencies. So you got 10% down and a clean as can be contract with no seller help, no seller take back, no let's inflate the price and give me money back at closing, all that kind of stuff. None of that. This is the cleanest contract you could ever get, number one. Number two, there's a typically there's a up to 45-day closing period. Maybe you could be shortened to 30. But if there's an approval process from an HOA or a condo board or all the disclosures are, it, it, but we give them no more than 45 days, but it could be shortened to 30. Okay. That's that. Now here's, let's talk about money because everybody likes to talk about money. Sean, I believe, and correct me if I'm wrong, charged the seller 6%, which he was willing to pay Sean and or a buyer agent. So Sean charged him that. We get paid from the buyer. So the buyer's paying what's known as a, a, a commission to the agent, buyer's premium. And then Sean and I will each contribute 1% of what we make if, in fact, there's a buyer agent that comes along, which about 50% of the time there is and isn't. So Sean could take that extra 1% and keep it, or he can give it back to the seller, or we could do whatever we need to do. But keep in mind, if you want to make 5%, charge six, just in case you need that extra 1%. If you want to charge three, charge four. If you want to make two, charge three. Keep that 1%. You can always give it away or keep it. The buyer's paying us. Most importantly, the buyer is paying all the closing fees, the doc stamps, the transfer fees, and you're picking the title company. So let me recap for just a minute. You're going to say, Mr. Seller, we have an 85% chance that we can get your house sold in the next 21 days. You're going to watch it online. Sean is not going to kid you. He tells you he had 30,000 page views and like 1,200 saves on his properties because they see the opening bid. Everybody's sharing it. They're talking about it. They're driving by. They're going, wow, what's wrong with that house? They're walking around with a flashlight. You're now creating interest beyond your wildest belief for a property. There were times where Sean was at the two scheduled open houses, 90 minutes. We're not doing three hours, four hours, showing it every time somebody wants to see it. And Sean actually got everybody together in the room and said, all right, let's get Scott on the phone. And I answered all the questions as I would do for you. So we have full support. You're plugging into our proven portal, 100-year-old company, all, only doing auctions. We probably do about 1,000 auctions a year. You can go on our website, which I'll send you afterwards. So keep in mind that you're with a real company. Sean will vouch for our authenticity. I've been here 25 years. Keep in mind you're going to make more money. Your client will probably net more money when you maybe discount your commission a little bit and there's no closing costs and you bring them an as-is contract with no inspections, appraisal, or financing contingencies. Keep in mind, you're going to freeze the market. Nobody's going to buy a property in that area when your list price is 200000 and everything's selling for four. You're going to be the king or queen bee on the block. Yeah, Keep in I mind that it's a- I got a lot of leads from it, just to, just to say the least. Um it, the open houses were jam packed, and and the the leads were were, were crazy, um, and the the open houses had traffic throughout. It was not one of those boring ones. And when he says reduce your commission, he means reducing your commission from six percent to maybe five. That's actually what I did. I got five percent for that one. Yeah. Um, yeah. And he didn't have to pay closing costs or um, a buyer's agent, but the house did sell, just like you said. So two choices. Sean went to the guy, I forgot his name, the older gentleman, George. What was the name? George? Uh, no, um, I had the to find son. him. 
client. He was calling me like 10 but times. Whatever his name was, Sean said, <laughs> Sean, Sean said, listen to me. This will work for you. You know, we've already tried everything else. You want to move. You have a deadline. you got to do it. Let's just try it. Because if it doesn't hit the minimum, which is not disclosed to the general public, by the way, the only people know the minimum, it's called a reserve, is us and the seller. So let's say it doesn't hit the minimum. We fall short. They want 350 The high bid's 330 They have no obligation to accept that or pay us a dime. We risk all our resources. I'm in a building right here with 53 people. Number two, the, buy, the seller can accept a 330 when he wants 350 because he's not paying closing costs. Maybe you get a little less on your commission. He's getting it as his contract. He knows when he's moving. He knows he's got a 10% deposit. Great. So there's so many different ways. And when that clock starts going down to zero, which we're all watching, it's a very transparent auction. The, the guy's heart's racing and the people are bidding and then maybe the increments get lowered to 5,000 bidding or 2,500. And then it just starts to unwind. And then when the clock goes down closer to zero, if somebody bids within the last three minutes, the clock will reset for three minutes, which gives people more time to think. And they go, honey, we're at 3.30. Should I go to 3.35? Okay, just throw one more bid. And then the guy goes at 335 and somebody else is having that conversation with their wife or husband and they go cap out at 350. So what happens is fair market value is determined through competitive bidding. If you were having addendums go from the seller to the buyer with the different price and back and forth, and we want the, we want the uh, washer and dryer and we don't want to give you the washer and dryer. We want the chandelier, all that, none of that. It's as clean as contract you could ever get. It's already online for them to read and review again. You're picking the title company, your title company's holding the deposit, and it's basically easy as could be. It all comes down to, please, this is very important, seller's level of motivation. If they're not an eight out of 10 or a nine out of 10, there's a real reason why they're moving. Unfortunately, sometimes it's death or divorce. It could be a job loss, it could be a relocation, whatever it might be. If they're just testing the market, and if you list it and they get their price, they'll move. They're not for us, we're not for them. We need people to have a real reason to move. We've got 21 days to sell this property. Secondly, we have to know what the equity level is. If they owe 340 and it's worth 350, it's not an auction because it's too close. What if we only get to 320? But if they owe nothing or they owe 200 or 250 and they want 350, there's room there for them to say at the end, okay, you know what, Sean? You've proven to me by marketing the crap out of this. I've seen how many people are riding by here. They're answering me questions when I'm getting the mail. They want to come in. I've seen the, all the hits online. You've proven to me what my house is worth. It's not what I thought. It's not what Zillow said. It's not what the neighbor said. It's not what you said. The buyers have the money. Cash is king, and they're in control. People have taken overpriced listings for about two years now, and somebody dimmed the lights. Nobody's throwing money at you like they were before. And that's pretty much A to Z. Power of the auction.com, which Sean will send out, is really where you go to hear everything I just said. It's got some YouTube videos on there. It's an educational website. And I'd like for you to all go through Sean to get the first level of what do I do next and how do I go? And then he can communicate with me because he's really a good sounding board for everybody. And he can, he, he does very good hand holding. I get bombarded each day with all these calls. But I'm certainly willing to help you. Of um, you know, he said level of motivation. It's not just level of motivation, it's also how realistic are they? Let me give you an example. I have had these three listings for seven months. I finally got rid of two of them. The third one, we actually took to auction. I convinced him, you need to do this. The market is on a steady decline. You keep wishing you had the previous offer. Um, so we put him on the auction. We end up getting 190 was the final, I think, 185 or something. 185, 190. You 190. Um, yeah, and he refused it. And that's the value of the home. Now we are reduced to 195, hoping for an offer, getting offers at 170, and we're still playing the same game. He was not realistic. He was not motivated. He has other he has other things going on, um, but more than more more than anything, he was he was unrealistic. Um, and it and this is also a way if you have people that are unrealistic, you can show them. Like I I've literally been like, do you realize? 30,000 people saw this on Zillow, 1,200 people saved it. You still don't have the offer that you're looking for. What does that tell you? And it, and it, and it helps them have a better understanding of where, where they really should be versus what they think they should be because they have some sort of emotional attachment to the property. Um, but in the end, it's, it's quick. 
Um, there is no BS to deal with. Like he said, there is zero contingencies. The buyer pays for the auction company. They pay for the buyer's agent commission and they pay the seller's um, closing costs. Um, that's amazing. So you have to remember that you have to tell your seller, hey, yeah, this is the price we got. Now, what were you going to pay in closing costs? What were you going to pay a buyer's agent? What are you coming uh, out of pocket with? Boom. Now add that to the price. This is where we actually are. And you have to tell them that. You have to explain that because they're not going to put all the pieces together. They get really emotional in the sale process. Everybody knows that. Um, yeah. And we're also not asking them to stage the house, paint the house, fix the house. Now, if there's something blatant, you don't want to take care of it. But we're not coming in there making them do a whole lot of work. We're basically saying, plug in here. We're, we're, we're taking your car to the auction and um, there's going to be a lot of buyers there that day. Let's see what they want to pay for it because people understand car auctions. So that's that. And the fact that Sean has had this experience, he's turned us on to a lot of agents. Most of the time, I'm telling you, 85 percent successful. Where we fail is, again, they don't have enough equity like that guy that Sean brought us. I think he wanted 200 or 220 and we got to 190 plus the buyer's premium, all the commission. And he was very stubborn. But Sean told me going in, he was hard headed and he didn't need the money. And looking back, we probably should have passed on that. However, it, it's not that we're right at the end. It's that re that's reality. The reality is your house is determined by price in three areas, price, condition, location. Usually the price is off, but the condition is pretty good and the location is good or one of the three. But it's typically sellers go on Zillow. The neighbor says, oh, you ought to get 390 or somebody tells them something or an appraiser told them or whatever. The auction is real. It's about as real as it gets. And does anybody have any questions that are maybe some things that they didn't uh, hear uh, and would like to uh, ask Scott or myself? Hey, Sean, I'll ask the first question here. Yeah, go ahead. Um, so the, the question is, how often do you guys get to reserve for the reserve price? Is it is it common or uncommon? Very common. As a matter of fact, it's usually at or above because what happens is my job is to put the sellers in a realistic mode. To here's the real true comps. Now, what else can I buy for three seventy five? And I show them. And what has sold for three seventy five in the last thirty days? And look at the days of a market growing. And you're and you have a you have solar panels that somebody's got to pay off, or a generator, or your house has this or that or the other. So what we do is the the, the reserve has to be realistic. We don't just take a property at any number. The agent and I discuss it, and if let's say MLS price is three sixty, and I say to the agent, "Give me off the record in your heart of hearts, what's it worth?" Three thirty, but he took the listing at three sixty. So, in my experience, I'd be out of business if I took bad real estate. I've sold over two thousand properties at auction. I'm telling you, eighty five percent at or above. Now, some of that below that they take because they saw the offer it was three fifty. They wanted three seventy five, but they're moving. What are they going to do now? Reduce it to 369, hope to get an offer. So the answer to your question, meet or exceed 85% of the time because we take the property at what we want to take it at, not what the agent wants to try it at. You and I both know most of these agents out here take listings in any number just to get a listing. We don't do that. Yeah, We're looking for I sale. Will say, I will say this. Uh, Scott's also a good tool for people who don't necessarily always know how to just give it straight to their client, even though they might not like what they're about to hear or just like be completely real with them. You can use Scott as a tool to, to, to give them the, the real raw truth and, sure. and, and he'll give it to them. And, you know, you can talk to Scott ahead of time and be like this kind of clients like this or like that, but Scott's going to let them know what, what sometimes we don't necessarily want to tell them or, or we don't. Uh, I, I, I say, I, I, I say what you're thinking. And Sean on the last one called me and he said, take it, take it easy on this guy. Yeah. <laughs> I, but, I, but, I tell him ahead of time how much, you know, what, what level of a person they, that, that he's dealing with and it helps. And then he can relay messages that I don't necessarily want to say to my client. Um, not necessarily but, that it's a bad thing, but like, you know, raw truths. Um, sometimes me, I'm, I'm kind of raw truth myself, but. So let me give you a perfect example. We just had somebody call us with a condo in Aventura, which is like Miami area. And in a beautiful building, the guy's got in the market for 985000 The agent called me and said he's got to get out. Well, it's $2,800 a month in condo fees. He's not living there. The taxes, all the stuff going on with condos we all know about in South Florida, blah, blah, blah. So we had a really, really down and dirty conversation with he 
the seller and his attorney who wanted to know all about this. We told him the reserve should be 700,000. Now he was at 985. He says, I don't disagree. The agent could have never, ever in 20 lifetimes got him down $285,000 for reserve. Okay. True story. We go to the auction. This is when all the news was hitting last month about condos in South Florida with assessments and 20% depreciation and all that. We have a high bid of 540,000. His daughter was on the phone. She says, Dad, I think you should take it. You've owed it 20 years. It owes you nothing. And you're putting $540,000 in the bank and you can get 5% and you don't have to pay money every month. You're getting a check instead of writing one. Long story short, he agreed. So now he's from 985 to 540. True story. It's called Car Carnado Towers in, in um, Aventura. So now what happens is the buyer does what he needs to do. He has bought from us before, a good buyer. In Florida, as you know, there's a three-day right of rescission on a condo. His first phone call is to the association president. Tell me what's going on in the building. Guess what? $50 million assessment coming. $50 million. He has two units, double units. He said to me, thank you, but no thank you. So that's the story. But the guy went from 985 to 540 because he knew. Now, we can sell these condos that are problems. Investors are buying them, but they're way off the mark from the retail value. Could be 40%. And that was a proven entity. So that one didn't work. And then we just had one in a Coe that the lady wanted 320. We got the 328. So it's always we can lower the the actual bidding to 1000s at the end once we get close to the reserve because people are bidding and they don't think they're really bidding. 320, ah, I bid 321. Another guy said 322. People think in round numbers. 325, and I'm out. So we have the psychology down like nobody's business. Our sweet spot. It's usually three to five hundred thousand dollar properties. Although my most expensive home at auction was two point five million, but we we do things other people don't do. We don't charge the admin fee if you're charging it. There's really no expense to us. And mm -hmm. there's a lot of people. I'm sitting with our graphic designer on the other side of my computer here. She will do amazing work for you, free of charge. Send out all kind of cheat sheets and information sheets. Put you on our website. You know, you send over the headshot. She makes you look handsome or beautiful. You know, all that good stuff. So Sergio, it's really a no-brainer. You got a question? That? Sergio raised his hand. Yeah, Sir. How long from putting it on the auction website to actual auction dates? How long is that process? So here's what happens. By the time you get us on a phone call, or even Sean with the seller, and everybody's on board, usually it's 24 hours, maybe 48, if we're real busy, for our transaction coordinator to send out the FAR bar contract, with your title company, typically we ask them to charge you about $950, which is the best standard. And then basically that listing agreement goes out to you and it goes out to the seller. So from the day they decide, say it's 48 hours, they sign it, we get it back. My web guy does a website, typically in one day, say two. Just, you know, sometimes we get real busy with a big company. But I'm giving you accurate information. It's not going to be a week. It's going to be one or two days for these things. And then what happens is we plan the date accordingly between you and the seller. If he says, I'm going to be in Germany December 8th to the 14th, even though I have access to my phone, I'd rather be at home or whatever the excuse is. But we say, what will work for you? Give us three weeks from now. We don't do Fridays because you have to wire 10% of the money the next day. And that's Saturday to business a banking off day. So Monday through Thursday, we have auctions. Okay. Sometimes we have seven, eight, nine, 10 in a day. So let's say your auction, let's say they sign November 1st. They're ready to go. Typically November the 22nd, which is 21 days will be their auction. We pick a time. They know they're going to be, their property is going to be sold. Hopefully 85% that date and time. 16 days after they sign is when the opening bid starts. You can now put in your deposit. We see an NDA. They sign a non-disclosure. They've read the FAR bar contract with the auction addendum. They've read all the disclosures. They know there's a buyer's premium. They know it's as is where they know everything because they've signed. They've acknowledged that. Now I get a report. Mike Smith in Tus Tuska, Oklahoma, just signed up for your property on Maple Street. So I wait a day, call him, say, Mike, got any questions? And then as we get closer to the auction, people start bidding a little. Most people wait to the last day. But we have a full report generated of all the names of anybody that came in, looked at the property, once more registered. At the After the auction ends, we give you those names. We don't want anything for it. These are usually non-represented buyers that come along that are looking for something in your area. Feel free to go make money out of that list. We don't want anything from it. So, yeah. so to answer um, your question, it's 21 days from the day it's actually inked. 
website, everything gets up. We send you the MLS remarks. You change it. It takes you five minutes. We tell you what to say, how to say it. We send you the cheat sheet, and we do everything for you, basically, and you just plug in. Nothing's really going to happen except your two open houses. You're going to have questions. There are times people make strong offers at the open house, and the auction could be canceled if the seller's happy. If they're happy and we're happy and you're happy, everybody gets paid and everybody knows what they're doing. It's, it speeds up the process. I know it sounds crazy since you're already having problems getting people to even show it that people would pay $10,000 to be a bidder, but it actually happens. And it's another beautiful thing that you can tell your sellers. We're not getting tire kickers. We're not getting these people that have no intention of buying your house and they just want to be nosy and take a look. Um, you're getting real legit buyers with real legit buying experience. Um, but I will say this when it comes to the auction, like he said, the last day is generally when a lot of the action happens. Um, don't, but your seller needs to be available right as the, the hammer hits at mid at noon, because he's going to have to have a conversation, you know, Hey, say it got over the reserve. He's happy. Boom. No, there's still going to be a conversation to be had, but say it goes a little bit under the reserve. He needs that. They need to make a decision at that moment. So they need to be available. And the one thing I will say is if they're iffy about it, they should do it. Like it, if it's no, then it's no. But if they're like, ah, uh, maybe, maybe not, they should do it. Because what happens is once that energy and that adrenaline goes away of the actual bidding process and people going, oh, 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 somebody beat me. Let me go out and try again. The desire and the motivation goes away as well. I, we That guy that turned down our auction offer that he actually wishes he had now, he came back to me a week or two later and said, hey, exactly. call the guy back, that offer? Right. And I called Scott, he called the guy and the guy basically said, piss off. <laughs> like, no, yeah. I don't want to do it. The, the, the motivation is lost. The, the, it's, a, it's a process it's an, and, it, and it really gets people going. And once they're locked in, they're locked in because their money, they don't want to lose that 10%. Um, they don't want to even lose that initial bid um, or not initial bid, that initial deposit of 10,000. And just so you know, that's refundable. We don't charge. Everybody at the end of the auction, it gets refunded. Even the main bidder, gets refunded once we get to 10 percent we don't release that credit card hold until he actually steps up to the plate now once in a blue moon in my 25 years a guy gets cold feet i know that's going to be the next question so what happens is we go to the underbidder and say hey joe blow just lost his ten thousand dollars which is non-refundable if he backs out you can get it for your price which was 285 the guy bid 290 so then we at least have a list of everybody that called did we see where they're calling from we have their credit card information we have their email we have their phone number a lot of people put maximum bids in there that, that they basically tell us what they're going to bid sometimes it's over the reserve and if you're it's looking for investors and you work with investors a lot this is a great thing for you as well because at the end like he said he's going to give you that list of all those cash buyers um, and by the way, it doesn't have to be cash. I don't know if you mentioned this. They can finance it. That's why they give it 45 days after the 21-day period. Once they, they go, okay, boom, we're all signed. They give them 45 days. But if it's cash, it could be 10 days. It could be 15. But it's non-contingent. Although yeah. you can get it a conventional loan, no FHA, no VA, it's non-contingent. So you can go do whatever you got to go do. But we're not, we don't want to hear an excuse that you didn't disclose school loans 38 days later or you bought a new Mercedes, you know, last week and you fucked up your, well, screwed up your credit. Sorry. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, that's the least bad thing that happens today on this Zoom. So, <laughs> and then, and then every, you can watch our auctions, they're live and they're transparent. And you can have your seller watch with us on a Zoom call every day, Monday through Thursday, we have auctions. And then also, if you do go to our website, the main Alex Cooper website, and you click the button sold, no BS. There's 12,451 sold in the last few years in there with all the prices and everything about the property. 12,451. I mean, we're like a machine here. Any other questions from anybody? We'd love to answer some. I have I have a question. Can this can this work with um off market properties too? Well, here's what happens in all our experience. Usually, people that have an off market lead don't own the property; they just know about it. So, unless the seller is totally on board, the problem is if they see you selling a property and making thirty thousand go into the auction and the auctioneer made 6%, and they're getting a wholesale number, they're not happy, and they won't settle, or they'll come up with an excuse. What we found out recently, just recently, is if you say to a seller, look, let me market your property, I'm going to go to the auction, I'm going to give you a minimum of X, but if it sells at the auction, you're going to get a 
money back at the end? Maybe, but it, you have to own it to sell. It's like selling your neighbor's car. We really want to make sure you're the owner or the rightful owner. If it's an LLC, we want to see the operating agreement. We're very thorough here. So it could work, but we would like for the person that we're owning, we're dealing with has ownership to it. Uh, Scott, what if um, what if the owner wants to go to directly to you guys, right? Let's say they, they want to cut out the middleman. Which we can't. We, we have too much credibility with 100 years in business. What Sean does is he sends me a spreadsheet. I talked to Jim Smith at 123 Main Street. Uh, Bobby and Sue were on the Zoom call. And Sean will tell you, we've told Sean about commissions he didn't even know he was getting. <laughs> yeah, that's very true. I was like, oh, all right, you guys are cool. <laughs> no, but but we're 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 a very 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 transparent company, fourth generation, family owned. Believe it or not, the owner Alex Cooper who started this in 1924. Obviously, he's not here anymore. His son 90 90 comes in every day, drives a Porsche Turbo, and with his Walker, and it gives a lot of money to local charities and the other owners that were in the building. All one lives in Mirasol, one lives in Frenchman's Reserve, one lives in Boca West. So we have a Florida presence, but we're really not out to screw anybody. And we don't need the money that bad to, to have a bad reputation. So maybe what you need to do is send me a text and say, please verify that you got the fact that I, Mike Smith, represent Sally Jones, and then I'm going to write back confirmed. But we're not, Sean will tell you. We're Now, if something comes through and nobody mentions you, and our first question, believe it or not, on our check sheet is how do you hear about us? That's the first thing they got to answer. So, you know, I, we do the best we can to protect you. Anybody Especially if you have the listing. You have the listing. Now, if you don't have the listing and you want to do something on a referral basis, we could do something as well on that. Sean's done that before. Yep. I know there's some more questions in the chat. Somebody's thinking of something. Could you explain that referral base situation? Yeah. So the way it works normally is you hear about a property and you say to another coworker, hey, Scott, I'm going to bring you Mary Jones. She's got a great house, blah, blah, blah. We would come up with a percentage in advance of what Alex Cooper would get to you to help you out make some money for just kind of being a mouthpiece. You're not going to get rich, but sometimes that, Sean, sometimes it adds up to a couple thousand bucks. But but we don't want to start a multi-level marketing business with other people and then kind of keep track of who's calling us. And I, spoke, I saw Jim at a cocktail party. He told Mary, who told Steve. You know what I mean? We have to make it controlled. And on a case-by-case -case business, business is really where the best one where you send an email and say, I have a property I'm going to send you. And then what happens is the other agent is not on this call. So they don't get what you get. So then it's hours of trying to go through them. So we, we could, Sean will tell you, we're very fair about certain things. Yeah, they, that, there has been a couple of times where they reached out to me and said, hey, um, do you know about this address, this? And I'll be like, yeah, the, uh, that was this one that I uh, I forgot to call you about, and they they took care of me, and I was like, oh, that's a nice. Or, thing. I didn't or Sean or Sean will say, this person's out to lunch. Don't waste your time. They're totally unreasonable. Now there are times where we will get a call from the general public because they saw an auction. We are not agents and brokers in Florida. We're auctioneers. We're agents in Maryland, D.C., Virginia. We may need an agent to put the house on the MLS and go that route and then work out something. It doesn't happen very often, but, we're, we're, we, you know, we try to help everybody who's nice to us. Yeah, they actually, uh, they came out to a convention I was at in St. Pete, and um, they introduced themselves to everybody. Um, that yeah, we took a booth. We spent money. We were there. We, we did what we needed to do because Sean said this could be really good for you. So we did it. So we're, we could support you. I'm in Florida a lot. So if you needed to do Zoom calls, chalk talks, whatever, you know, we're, we're really here to help you if, if you if you get it. Now, what's going to typically happen is we're going to get a lot of calls in the next couple of days with properties that the sellers are way over where they should be. And for the unless you can say to them, listen, are you motivated? And we know we've tried it and it's been 72 days and we've had no offers, blah, blah, blah. So I need the kind of you to warm the engine. Otherwise, they get on the phone call and they say, I'm not taking a dime less. And I'm like, OK, that was a great call. That happened last week with with Kelly. He's, this guy lowered it to 900. And he said, the agent told me if I lower it to 900 from 975, they'll be ba banging down my door. She says, I never told you that. <laughs> uh, yeah. Scott, uh, does, it, does it matter if the house is falling apart? 
No, it's better because we are our investor list is unbelievable. As a matter of fact, we do better with poor quality houses that investors see there's a potential than we do with pristine listings that are all decked out where there's nine in the community for sale. Now we just saw one in Wellington for a million four three. By the way, the agent made six percent. Six percent. We made money and everybody was happy. And we she wanted a million seven when we started when she got to us. And I said it's not worth a million seven. Miles just asked two million. You're wasting your time. I said, go to the auction, and the auction will prove to you what it's worth. We had seven bidders. Um, the address we could send you. It's on our website. One point four three million. You have the address on that, Katie. You see, remember the one we did for in Wellington, just recently. Anyway, um, we and again, our graphic designers here. You don't have to spend any money. There's no additional admin fee. There's no closing cost to the seller. Even though the buyer is paying, you're picking the title company. As is, where is, no inspections, no appraisal, no financing contingencies, 85% chance we hit or above. It's really a no-brainer. But again, sellers are emotional about money. They have to be shown and told. We have to explain it to them. Sometimes yeah. we have to, yeah. Uh, someone has a question. How, do an, how does an investor sign in to see these auction properties? Or so how, do the, how do the investors hear about them? So here's what happens. In Maryland, we have 52,000 names in our database that are everybody and anybody that's ever bought, sold, or registered for a property in the last couple of years. Believe it or not, and Sean, your property sold to out-of-state investors. Remember that one lady in North Carolina? Yep. And then we had one in um, Port St. Lucie. The person was from South Carolina, never saw it. So what happens is Remember, it's going to hit Trulia, Trulia, Realtor.com, Zillow, Redfin, Alex Cooper, whoever you're with at the opening bid. It's going to hit it the minute you put on the MLS at 200000 but let's say we want three fifty. Everybody and their mother is searching Palm Beach County, Orlando, Davenport, Ocoee, or whatever they're searching. Now your property is going to pop. There it is, 200000 What three bedroom, two bath, 1,700 square feet. What's wrong with this place? So that's where they're going to come from. Now, if you have an investors and you send the list out, you kind of want to send them through us and tell me who you're sending it to or tell them they got to go through you so you can get paid. It's not an exact science. If somebody picks up the phone, they don't mention you. We say, where'd you hear about us? We saw you online. You know, We're, we're not out to screw anybody. But I'm telling you, what they see on Zillow, Trulia, Realtor.com, Redfin, if you look up to 2444 Andre Court, just sold last week, and Kelly, we had 11,000 uh, page views on that property. It sold for 8,000 more than the lady won. 2444 Andre Court. Now, the days on market are going to say a lot more because we sold it a, lot, a while ago, and it keeps adding up to it. But we sold that in 21 days. So to answer your question... Um, you're yeah. going to get regular people that come from just putting it on the MLS and and, and all the sites that the IDX goes to, um, but they they also shoot it out to their fifty something thousand investors as well. So um, you get you get to hit it from two different angles, well multiple angles because like you said, Zillow, Truly a Realtor, all that too. Um, I can show you screenshots of what my property got prior to the. Um, auction and then after the auction and then i could show you all the names that they sent me after everything was all over that i was able to follow up with and now i have a pocket full of investors um that I can we have zip codes we see who's calling from where they're calling from where their credit card is registered to they're everywhere somebody was in the armed forces in germany bidding so again can you imagine if you took whatever listing you're thinking in your head right now is not selling and let's say it's whatever 379 and now all of a sudden it's going to hit the MLS at 250. Can you only imagine the influx of interest and, and demand? It, it's off the chart. So I know you're going to be anxious to talk to everybody. Like Sean said, I can't take it anymore. <laughs> Sean said a lot of idiots called me. So we made a sheet up. It says, fill this out. And then once we review it and read it, we'll get back to you. Anybody else have any other questions? Yeah, I have another question. Sorry, I'm I'm really interested. So say like um I'm I'm calling up for sell by owner and they want to sell and then I bring up this this option. Okay, hey, you don't want to put it on the MLS, but then we can see we could put it on the auction to get a cash buyer. How would that how how can that work with you guys? So the, so the good news is the guy that got us that Aventura condo I mentioned earlier, he has a call center. And all they're doing is calling everybody all day long. I don't know where he gets his leads from. And he has a lot of properties that he calls me with from time to time. And they're all for sale by owners. 
So he says to them, I'll tell you what, 2.5% or 3%, no closing costs, 21 days to sold, but I need to be your representative. Then you'd list it. It has to be on the MLS in your name. We're not, we're not brokers and agents in Florida. Okay. So you would list it, go right to the auction, be compensated what you think's fair. Maybe send them a video or two of what we have that's three minutes long, how to buy, how to sell at the auction. If they're not convinced after that, move on. Because this is about as good as it gets. Yeah, I mean, with a for sale buy owner, you could essentially, you know, a lot of them, they they think they can do it by themselves. They don't want to pay anything. Um, but, you know, they'll go and they'll pay $1,000 to put it on a listing service, won't they? Right? Yeah, and they're, and they're still paying an so, agent. Somebody's, yeah, they're, they're somebody's paying coming somebody to get it up online. So you could tell them, hey, tell you what, I'll just do it for 1%. And then, or, or or whatever, you know, like you, you can figure out a, a, a percentage and then essentially the auction company can get paid by the buyer. You can get your 1% and then you don't even really have to work for them. You could say, yeah, yeah, sure. Go, why don't you connect? So, so here's, what happens. here's what happens. Real estate agents are not our competition in Maryland. It's these for sale by owner companies that are promised these little old ladies that are going to nursing homes or that somebody died, you know, we'll move you, we'll pay you. Meanwhile, they're buying it for wholesale amounts of money. So what, I, what happens is if a real estate agent follows me into a listing appointment or afterwards, okay, I say to them, make sure you ask them, when am I going to sell my house? They can't give you a date and a time. I don't want to pay the agent. I don't want to pay the closing costs. I don't want to fix anything. I don't want appraisal contingencies. I don't want inspection contingencies. I don't want financing contingencies. I want a 10% non-refundable deposit. Blah, 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 blah. The agent's going to say, call Scott. But not really, but you know what I mean. Somebody asked, uh, what's the fee the seller pays for your service? And I answered them just so everybody else can see. Um, seller pays no fees, but your commission. Uh, buyer pays auction company, uh, closing costs, and buyer's agent uh, commission. Uh, yeah, buyer's agent commission. Um, Scott, is there, a, is there a way for us as the agent, let's say we have a buyer instead of a seller, right? Is there a way for us to be able to send them a link so they kind of go through us to be able to purchase this so we can still make a commission off them buying? Yes. It? Yeah, that's a good question. What happens is we have what's known as a buyer participation agreement that's on the website through the MLS and our website. Yeah, if you fill that out prior exactly. to them bidding at the auction, prior, they can't already register, start bidding, and then you call me, you know, three hours later and say, oh, I represented Jim at the auction today. You get 2%. You do nothing but fill out a form. You're not negotiating. The contract's already written. We're just filling in the purchase price. You're not attending um, uh, inspections and, and appraisals and all that stuff. You're basically just saying, hey, I represent Jim's. Now, you can only represent one person for each auction because it's not fair if you have four buyers and they, you all know what you know what they're going to bid and you're like in the middle. That's not very transparent. So yeah, the form said, yeah. Sorry, you're going to put a lot of instructions in the realtor remarks. You're going to let them know how to participate, where to go to participate. You're going to let them know that they're going to give you a script that you can just copy and paste into the, the realtor remarks. And then in the attachments, you're going to have the uh, buyer agent participation agreement. Uh, there's going to be a copy of the uh, auction contract so they can kind of take a look at that, I believe. Uh, what other things did we put in the in, in the so, I so we have to have, obviously, the disclosures. And then we have to know if anything is excluded or excluded, obviously. It's just a regular listing, the four bar listing with the auction addendum. But what's important is you're bringing them these terms. No, nobody's got terms like what we have, number one. Number two, if you do represent a buyer, which you could, you could, let's say we have a property in Ocoee, Florida. You could send it to your list and ask those people to go ahead and contact you. And then if you, let's say there's three of them or five of them, Give them the other people in your office that you can have, have represent. Because, again, you can only represent one. So if you go into our main website at alexcooper.com, which Sean will send you, and you go into the search bar, it'll tell you all the properties in Florida upcoming. So you don't have to – because we have hundreds of them on there. Or you can go into the sold section and put in Florida, and anything that we've sold there will tell you the results. But there's a lot of ways to make money with our company. It's very unique and different. Do the sellers give any disclosures before the auction, or is it a completely blind slash sight unseen type of purchase? Today? Yeah. I said Tuesday. Okay. That's tomorrow. It's tomorrow. I'm sorry. Jared interrupted me. <laughs> Damn you, Jared. Do the sellers give 
make any disclosures before the auction or is it completely is it a completely blind slash no 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 listen listen we're we're a really good company we're not trying to pull the wool over anybody's eyes if you know about it we know about it every ethics course we ever take says disclose 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 we like to sleep at night we've never been sued we don't want to be sued it, it's it's a regular listing with an auction addendum that provides all the terms and protection. However, you have to tell us in these disclosures, and we can't be bullshitted. You gotta, and you'll have they'll, they'll you'll have three open houses. You're gonna do three Saturdays or like two, or two, Sean. Sometimes two. Sometimes, sometimes two. two. I just uh, I chose to do all three because so many people were coming through. I wanted all their information, so I did all three Saturdays for two hours each day. Um, you don't have to. You can let other people do them. Um, but I recommend that's the days that all these people can come in and, and, and look, you know, and I just tell them, hey, no one can see the house uh, unless it's on these Saturdays. And then everybody shows up on that day. Is, what happens is, what happens is, the, is this a nationwide service or only particular states? Well, we're, we're Maryland, D.C. and Virginia based. We have two offices. One's in Maryland's a 30,000 square foot building I'm sitting in. We have an office in Washington, D.C., and that controls Virginia. And then, believe it or not, Sean got us into Florida a year ago. So we're Maryland, D.C., and Virginia. We're really not looking to go national. When Sean got me to go to his convention last year, we had all these people from Texas bugging me. But we have enough to do here, believe it or not. So Florida is really our growth area where we're concentrated on a 2025 and 2026. Well, would you go so, into, like, New Jersey and New York, though, or North Carolina? No, 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 we're kind of no. up and down the East Coast. No, Maryland, D.C., Virginia, and Florida. So um, also another thing uh, that I wanted to let everybody know is they don't just sell houses. When I first met them, you know, they were they had just auctioned John Lennon's piano for two million dollars. So this is also a service that you can provide to people that just have expensive collectibles or rare items, correct? Well, yes and no, because we transport them and we go into these homes that are wild here in Maryland and Washington, D.C., it's easier for us to transport it than it would be somebody coming from. Sanford, Florida, with a high, you know, like a piano, but but we have a coin guy, a stamp guy. Believe it or not, we have an aficionado on art, antiques, cars, even guns, anything you need to do. But it has to be where it makes sense to transport it, and then you actually get usually a five percent commission on the value of that property. But it, the logistics have to work. We're not set up in Florida with a warehouse to take all the stuff in like we are here. Every six weeks here, we have a gigantic auction. The stuff comes in, it goes out. It could be Hermes handbags. It could be a Christian Dior scarf. It could be uh, a, a 1920 penny. It could be anything. It's on our website. It's very, very interesting. I don't get involved in all that if I can help sure it. Eventually, you guys will have some sort of setup here once it gets. Uh... It may, it's a, that part of the business is a lot of work. Transporting it, cataloging it, tagging it making a brochure, keeping track of it, making sure it goes out undamaged. It, it, I rest on real estate. <laughs> yeah. Anybody else have any other questions? Does anybody uh, throw some uh, hands in the chat if you think this may be good for a client of yours? I have a question. He, he said cards. What about y'all do RVs too? Well, it depends. I, I so, It's funny. I sold a 400-passenger Mississippi-style riverboat a number of years ago here. It didn't run. The guy came from Troy, New York, to buy it, and he figured out a way to tow it, and then they put it somewhere at a restaurant as a barge where it's just it doesn't need to run. People just go in there and drink. So we, we've sold RVs. We sold, if it makes sense, we can sell it. it. It has to make sense. It has to be logistically correct. We have a lot of brain power here in our building to know, you know what, that's a waste of time. But we sold – We've sold collectible Mercedes, old collectibles, all, all kind of war material, and helmets from the Civil War, and swords, and all kind of crazy stuff. Anybody so, have you know, more questions about the real estate part of things? Say it again. I was just seeing if anybody had any no. more questions about the real estate side of things. I got one new message. Where can I find upcoming or current list of real estate auctions in Florida? The power of so, poweroftheauction.com. The real estate.alexcooper.com. You, you, Sean, you'll send that the link. Real estate.alexcooper.com. That's the main company website. It has all the upcoming and all the solds. That's where you plug into. The power of the auction is our tutorial website. But real estate.alexcooper.com. 
But if you if really, if you do have any properties, because Sean's going to send me the list who was on the call today, go through him as your initial contact. He'll warm everything up and then call me because I'm I get bombarded. Anyone else have any questions? Uh, just real quick regarding financing, because I know financing is an option. They can use any financing company they want, or you guys, they have to go through your financing company. No, we by law, we can't tell them who they have to use. They have to pick whoever they feel comfortable. And then once they pick that company, that what happens is that an hour after the auction ends, one of our transaction coordinators calls the buyer and says, congratulations, you won the bid. You know, here's our title company. Here's the wire instructions. And at some point in time, they can tell us who their lender is. But remember, it's not contingent. So we don't get involved with all their financing. That's up to them to come to the settlement table. Now, we do check as we're going along to make sure that there's nothing that's hiccuped. But they get to pick whoever they want. Does anybody else have any questions? All right. It sounds like we've handled all the questions. Uh, you can feel free to call me if you need. I'll put my number in the chat so I can tell you if a property that you have um, is a good option for auction or not. Um, and then I can just connect you directly with Scott. That's my number in the chat right there. Um, feel free to reach out to me anytime. I don't care if it's a month from now, two months from now, you come across something, let me know, I'll help. And I'll uh, connect you with Scott and we can- just Sean, one, one other quick thing. We sent you um, recently a checklist. Yeah, if you uh, send me... out the checklist, put in there, the first question is, how'd you hear about us? Make sure you put in Sean, and then the checklist needs to be checked off instead of just asking 47 million questions. Then we'll come back with the questions. But that's the property address, condition, how much they're asking, what do they owe? It's all the important questions that we need to know. I'm going to pull it up real quick, and I'm going to put it into the chat. And then one other thing while you're there doing that, Sean. Yeah. Can you pull up poweroftheauction.com? Share my screen. I think I can. Okay. Uh, admin might have to make my screen shareable. Just give me one second. All right. Oh, there we go. That's why. All right, guys. Let me get this checklist. Scott Frank. Auction graph, uh, maybe uh, disability. Here it is, the checklist. All right, guys, let me go to the chat here and upload this. I believe I can, yeah, file. Upload file from my computer. Downloads, boom, there it is. Oh, they already did it for me. <laughs> it's already in the chat. Thanks, George. <laughs> Are short sales and foreclosures properties acceptable? No, because while, by the time we get to the auction, and by the time they're ready to foreclose on there, it muddies the water. They could have to cancel our auction because the foreclosure went through. It, it's no good. We want an we want an eighty five percent chance of success. We've already been down every road with every problem and every headache. And short sales, you need all kind of approval, and the buyer doesn't know that he's gotten approval, and it's too much red tape. We want to deal with the owner who's got an interest in selling it, who we can call on the phone and, and they watch the auction, say we're at 325, that's what you wanted, we're good to sell. And everybody says yes. So we're really not looking for headaches. So real quick, if you scroll through here in the upper right-hand corner, Sean, where it says YouTube videos. Yeah. Upper right-hand corner, it'll, it'll have like all the social media stuff. Okay. YouTube, next to it. Yeah, that's it. That's it. There's, there's about six videos on here that are a couple minutes each. Had a bid at the auction. Why should I go to the auction? I'm an agent. Why should I take my property to the auction? I'm a, I'm a an attorney. There, there's that right there. In 20 minutes, you'd be an authority. There's the YouTube link in the chat. Flooded property slash fire damage property. Yes, 100%. 100%. Any other questions, anybody? All right. I think we got it all covered now. Um, Sean, thanks. I know it took a lot of energy for you. I appreciate it as always, my man. Well, actually, I just had never had a, a Zoom bomb before, and I didn't know what to do. I was like <laughs> freaking out. I'm like, they're going to blame me. I'm not oh, a pervert, I swear. Yeah. <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you very much. Call Sean, and then you'll get to me eventually, and, and you know, we're good to go. Thank you again. All right, guys. Have a great day. Be productive. Bye -bye. Appreciate you joining us. 
Uh, my number's in the chat. Their websites are in the chat. The YouTube's in the chat. Copy those and put them in your notes, all right? Thanks. Uh, one other quick, one other fast thing, Sean. When yeah. I met you, Sean, when I met you, the very first auction I had you watch was a 20-unit apartment oh, building. Oh, yeah. Let me, about, let me tell them about yeah. that. So because we were watching because the don't, Listen, listen. Don't, buy, don't back away from commercial properties. We love commercial properties. Go ahead, Sean. Yeah, so um, – they were like, hey, if you ever want, you want to see a live auction, so you know what it looks like, check this one out. But uh, join in the last five minutes. So I joined in the last five minutes. And like he said, the clock resets as people bid once you get under three minutes. So it went down to three. And then that three minutes ended up lasting about 49 minutes. And I saw the property go from 1.2 or 3 to 2.1. No, two, two nine. nine? Oh, yeah, two nine. So it literally went up a million and a half dollars in the last uh, five minutes, which turns into 49 minutes. So. And our commission was about $180,000 in that property. Okay. okay. All right. So we're good to go? Yes, we are. All right. All right. So commercial and residential. All right. Fair market value is determined through competitive bidding. Fair market value is determined through competitive bidding. That's what you got to remember. All right, guys. Enjoy your day. See you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.